Hello! First of all, I'd like to apologise for any background noise that you can hear in this video. There's quite a bit of inclement weather going on outside, plus I'm recording this earlier than I usually would, so there's somewhat more road noise as a result. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be looking at the now most requested video. Since last time I did the most requested video, it was such a resounding success. Wait a minute. Oh well, never mind. Anyway, so what we'll be doing in this video, as you may have already gathered from the title, is installing every different BIOS version currently available for the Dell G5 SE 5505 and taking a look at what the maximum and average temperatures the CPU and GPU reach under gaming and synthetic loads. Also in this video, I'll compare the Cinebench R23 scores achieved with each BIOS version installed. If you want to know what difference each BIOS version makes to the gaming performance of this laptop, then please see my previous video which was on this topic. I'll add a card here for that for your convenience. To start things off, we'll take a look at the gaming temperatures, for which I played some single player Red Dead Redemption 2 for a while. The hottest average temperatures that the GPU reached was 91.7 degrees C with BIOS version 1.4.4. And at nearly 10 degrees cooler than this, by far the coolest average GPU temperature recorded was the latest BIOS version 1.5.0 at 81.8 degrees. BIOS versions 1.1.1 to 1.3.0 were all fairly similar in comparison. Despite this big difference in the lowest average temperatures recorded, the maximum GPU temperatures recorded for each BIOS version were all within a margin of error of one another, with all but one getting an average temperature on the GPU of 94 degrees. Looking at the CPU temperatures next, and BIOS version 1.5.0 again achieves by far the lowest recorded temperature of 86.2 degrees C. That's nearly 10% cooler than the next lowest average CPU temperature recorded. Perhaps this explains why the average GPU temperature was so much lower for this BIOS version, despite the maximums being the same since the CPU and GPU share heat pipes. But I'm just guessing here. All of the average CPU temperatures recorded were pretty similar to one another. The maximum CPU temperatures recorded were all pretty similar between versions 1.1.1 to 1.3.0 and versions 1.4.4 and 1.5.0 were practically the same as one another too. Though cooler than the rest at 105 degrees C and 109 degrees C respectively. The highest maximum CPU temperature recorded was with the first BIOS version 1.1.1 1 .1 at 107 degrees. Next up is the synthetic workload for which I ran Cinebench R23 and Heaven Benchmark simultaneously. Starting off once again with the GPU average temperatures, this time the BIOS version 1.5.0 is one of the hottest versions at 89 degrees C being beaten by just 0.6 degrees by BIOS version 1.2.0. BIOS versions 1.1.1, 1.3.0 and 1.4.4 all came within a margin of error of one another at about 81 degrees. The maximum GPU temperatures recorded mirror the averages almost perfectly, with 1.2.0 and 1.5.0 being in joint hottest at 94 degrees C and all other versions achieving similar results to one another once again at about 87 degrees. The CPU's average temperatures under a synthetic load were all within a margin of error of 100 degrees C across all versions, but the maximum temperatures tell a slightly different story with BIOS versions 1.1.1 and 1.4.4 reaching 108.9 and 107.8 degrees C respectively. The other BIOS versions were all fairly similar at about 100 degrees C. Last up is the Cinebench scores, and given that BIOS version 1.1.1 and 1.4.4 gave the highest maximum CPU temperatures, it should come as no surprise to anyone that they also gave the highest Cinebench scores at 7805 and 
7819 respectively. After these we have BIOS version 1.2.0, which rather counterintuitively, since it recorded the lowest average and maximum CPU temperatures under a synthetic load, recorded the third highest Cinebench score at 7534. Not far behind, in fourth place, is the latest BIOS version 1.5.0, with a score of 7488, and in last place is BIOS version 1.3.0, which scored just 7259. In conclusion then, it would appear as though BIOS version 1.4.4 allows things to run quite a bit hotter for longer than BIOS version 1.5.0, as demonstrated by the much higher CPU and GPU temperatures recorded while gaming, and under a synthetic load the CPU was allowed to reach a higher temperature despite recording a similar average. Maybe allowing the CPU to reach this higher maximum temperature is what allowed 1.4.4 to achieve a Cinebench score 4.42% higher than 1.5.0. Having said this though, it does appear from the average temperatures that the GPU ran hotter for longer in BIOS version 1.5.0 under a synthetic load, although the opposite was true while gaming, which is where it really counts, to be honest. I can certainly see from these results why the general consensus is that BIOS version 1.4.4 gives optimal performance for this laptop, but for me, my opinion hasn't changed from the last video. That is, this laptop performs as well if not better than I need it to. So in order to safeguard the longevity of my laptop, I'm quite happy to leave some performance on the table in order to keep things running cool by using the latest BIOS. Besides, I know that if there comes a point in time where I need to squeeze a bit of extra performance out of this laptop, I can easily do so by rolling back the BIOS version to 1.4.4 and allowing things to run a little bit hotter. I could even counteract this heat by doing some simple modifications to get things running a bit cooler, and I could also disable Smart Shift, both of which I will cover in a future video, so be sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss that. And with that said, we have reached the end of another video. Thank you very much for watching, please leave a like and a comment, and I know I've just said it, but please do get subscribed, it really will help. Amazon rejected my application to the Associates program so I have no way of monetizing these videos anymore until I reach 1000 subscribers on YouTube, at which point I will be able to enable YouTube's monetization. Also, don't bother using the Amazon Associate links on my other videos if I haven't got around to removing them yet. Thank you once again, and I hope to see you in the next one.